join our free WhatsApp group to get daily latest updates. It's totally free. The test is in four part, part one, part two, part three, and part four. Now look at part one. In a moment, you will hear a conversation between Kevin, a tour operator, and Lisa, who wants a reservation for a London trip. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling World Tour and Travel. This is Kevin. How may I assist you? You said World Tour and Travel? Oh, good. Yes. I'd like to have some information, please. Sure. What can I help you with? Well, it's for a reservation to go to London next July. There will be three of us, all women. Oh, OK. That's not a problem. How long do you plan to stay in London? We'd like to stay a fortnight. OK. Three for a fortnight. Got it. And where in London would you like to stay? We've been told that Malvies is the best place. I know I really want to stay there. And one of the other girls, too. Would that be possible? Hmm. Maldives is difficult in July. Would you consider another area? Maldives, as you know, is quite popular, and July is the peak season for Maldives. I understand, but we really want to stay there. We don't need to stay at a hotel. We're more in mind to cook for ourselves and all that. Oh, you mean a self-catering arrangement, then? Right. That's exactly what we want. Well... That does give us a few more options. Are you thinking of a villa or a flat? Oh, a small flat would suit us. Very well. And you plan on staying a fortnight? Well, yes and no. You see, myself and one of the gals plan to stay for a fortnight. But Margaret, that's the other gal, she will be coming at a later time. That's not a problem, but you will have to pay for triple occupancy. You did say there were three of you, correct? Yes, three of us, all girls. Margaret, Chastity and myself. Paying for triple occupancy shouldn't be a problem. Now, we will need a safe place near the beach. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. We are on a budget, and so we are looking at spending no more than $100 a day. For that budget, you will have limited options, I'm afraid. Let me see what's available. Hmm... If you can make it in late June, I might have a bed sitter for $75 a night. It's a one-bedroom flat with three single beds. It has a drawing room and full kitchen, as well as full bathroom, of course. 
and it's only five minute walk to the main beach in Maldives. That sounds terrific. I'll take that. By the way, what's the name of the beach? The name is Heaven's Rise. It's the best beach there and has many amenities close by. There are a number of restaurants and shops there. Are you familiar with this beach? Oh my god, oh yes! I've never been there, but I've heard stories about it. My mum and dad went there on their honeymoon, and they still keep telling their friends to visit Heaven's Rise. I had no idea it was part of the Malvis. That sounds so romantic about your parents. Mine honeymooned in Gibraltar. It's so nice when these trips provide such happy memories. Now, from what I can see, this trip should provide you and your friends some very wonderful memories. I'm sure it will. To that, I have absolutely no doubts. I'm very excited now. I will have to speak with my friends regarding this, but I'm sure they will agree. OK. Do talk it over with your friends and make a final decision. Once you do, please call me back. My name is Kevin Smith. May I have yours, please? Yes, it is Lisa Perkins. OK, and now may I have your contact number? Yes, that's 555-226123. Very well, Lisa. Please call and ask for me, and I'll set everything up once you've made the final decision. I'm here weekdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Don't forget, you just have a month, so you need to make up your minds as soon as possible. I suggest you contact me tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Kevin. You've been really very helpful. I will certainly call you back tomorrow. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Now listen to the manager of the Red Mango restaurant delivering a pep talk about the offerings and about the layout of the facility. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 14. Hello everyone and welcome to the Red Mango. Now, the Red Mango has been a mainstay in Port Hiatus for the past 20 years. All thanks to the efforts of our founder, Mr. T.C. Bailey. Now on behalf of the Bailey family and our board of directors, I want to welcome you to our new and improved facility. With the renovation and expansion of our facility, we will be able to provide more choices, more services, more enjoyment, and more fun. To put it more simply, we are now offering more. Since the Red Mango is already a hit in our community and in the surrounding areas, we're expecting it to be a super hit. All of you who were with us prior to the renovation, welcome back. To those employees who have just joined us, I want to extend my warmest. Now please note, this is not the final renovation that was to be carried out. We will also be installing a security room to provide security and to ensure the safety of all of our guests and employees. 
We will also be hiring more employees since we have expanded our services and will need to handle the increase in number of customers. The restaurant area will feature Wi-Fi, which will be free of cost to our customers. They'll most certainly appreciate that. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now, listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Okay, let's begin. I want to go over the new layout with all of you. Right now, we are standing at the entrance. As you all know, since I'm the manager, my office is there in the corner to the left. In fact, the entire management and business team is located in that office. Off to the right are the washrooms. Each washroom features multiple toilets and other fixtures to make our washrooms complete. Also, the toilets use less water and are motion sensitive. This will ensure that we are saving water. Now here in the reception area. It is well appointed with couches and chairs for our customers to sit comfortably while they wait. In the corner to the left, we have the coat check where our customers can leave their coats, hats, purses, and other items. To the right of the reception area is our party and buffet room. It seats a maximum of 100 people and is rented out for parties and other events. Proceeding straight, we'll soon come to the main part of the restaurant, which is really a mini food court. In there, we currently have a stall each for Indian, continental, and Chinese cuisines. Each stall will serve both vegetarian and non-vegetarian dishes and the menu is supervised by our five-star Michelin chef, Pierre Montdulac. Later in the year, we'll be adding a stall which will feature South Indian food. The Indian stall is located on your right, the continental stall on your left, and the Chinese is located on the opposite wall from the entrance. We also plan to set up a Japanese, Mexican, and Thai food stall within the next year. Again, this will reflect our motto of giving our customers more. Next to the Chinese stall is the entrance to the game room. It features many of the latest video games, especially 3D games, which are sure to be a hit amongst the youngsters. It also has some classic video games such as Pac-Man, Frogger, and Donkey Kong. The game room will also have foosball, air hockey, snooker, and billiards tables. Another feature of the game room is that it leads to what we call the haunted house. This is a maze filled with a variety of horrors, chills, and thrills. It is certainly not for the faint of heart. For Halloween, this will figure prominently. Now, in an exclusive corner between the reception area and the continental stall is something for the foodies. It's the baker's lounge. Here can be found all sorts of sweets, snacks, and even full meals involving different pastries. It's truly worth a try. Well, that's it for the layout. I'm sure it is fairly clear for you all. Now the entire management team and I would appreciate hearing your views and concerns. You may also feel free to see me in my office if you have any questions or suggestions. Now you have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. You will now hear a conversation between a university professor and a student. 
they are discussing some problems that the student is facing with regard to her project work. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 25. Hello, Professor Reynolds. Are you busy? Do you have a moment? Hi, Julia. How are you? And yes, I do have some time. What can I do for you? Well, sir, I really need your help on this research project I'm working on. Certainly. What is the project about? What's the subject? Well, sir, as I mentioned to you last week, I'm going to do it on decaffeinated beverages. There's a lot of literature about caffeinated beverages and caffeine, so I thought I'd take a look at the other side of the coin, so to speak. Oh, yes, I remember. I must say, you picked a very different topic than what is generally taken up by students. I don't even think any student has ever written about caffeine, much less about decaffeinated beverages. So, how's it coming along? Well, I've done thorough research on the topic. In fact, I think I've exhausted all the resources that I could find. I've also written an outline and rough draft, but I'm really concerned. I think the report is going to be just too short. I don't believe I can justify all the research I've done for the report. Now that I'm at this stage, it's too late to start with another subject and I don't think I really have the time to do any more research. Okay. Right now, what is the length of the report? Approximately how many pages is it? Well, I think at the most it's about eight to ten pages. I'm including charts and graphical representations on at least two pages. Well, that sounds like a good length to me and very appropriate. I like the idea that you're putting in charts and graphs. That would strengthen your arguments. Really? Are you sure? I keep thinking it's not very long, even with the graphics. Yes, I'm very certain. The most important thing is what you have included in your report, rather than how many pages you've filled. Also, the path you've taken to complete the project is important to consider. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen to the second part of the discussion and answer questions 26 to 30. OK, I've started the report with some paragraphs that give an introduction about caffeine. From there, I move to describe the disadvantages of caffeine and several ways to achieve decaffeination. Well, that sounds like a good report. What else have you included in the report? Well, I have explained my research design and that is the primary problem. I'm not sure whether to present the report in abstract form or write it in a manner that everyone is able to comprehend easily. Well, I do recommend that you take the second route. A report should be crystal clear in every sense. In fact, you can distribute some of the copies of the report to your friends and ask for their feedback. But make sure you give that report to friends who do not have a background in or are taking up chemistry. If your friends have any problems understanding, that would indicate that you need to rewrite your report in simpler language. Wow, that's a brilliant idea. Then I'm glad I suggested it. Tell me what points you have included in the report. 
Hmm, as I told you, I've started off with research design, and that is where I'm facing some problems. After that, I plan to discuss some of the case studies. I was thinking of adding some personal experiences, but I've abandoned that idea altogether. Finally, I plan to include all the references that I've used. Make sure you cite all the references you've used. So, how is the experience of this report? Thank you. I've never made such a project before. It's been tough at times, but it has been fun. I'm actually thinking that maybe I might want to apply for a lab assistant's job. Sounds like a great idea. I'd like you to email me a copy of the report so that I can review it. That would be great. Thank you, Professor. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Now listen to part of a classroom lecture that analyzes how our dining customs or eating habits influence us and answer questions 31 to 40. You have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen to the lecture and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated, and please pay careful attention. Today I would like to discuss our daily eating customs. I'm going to discuss how they influence us, what we should eat, how much a person should eat, and how a person can make the act of eating much more pleasurable, enjoyable, and beneficial to one's overall health. First, I'd like to share the factors that influence our daily food choices. There are many factors, and these include our budget, surroundings, climate, tastes, knowledge of food and nutrition, culture surrounding food, the traditions of our family, and our own inclinations regarding health and fitness. For instance, on hot days, we would prefer to eat something chilled, whereas on cold days, we want something that is piping hot. We might be in a hurry, and if so, we might be more inclined to choose some type of ready-to-cook meal or go to a fast food restaurant for a quick meal. Our own family practices can influence our decisions. For instance, in my family when I was growing up, depending on the dish, we might have what was left over from the previous night's dinner for breakfast the next day. We might have cold pizza or fried chicken, even fried rice. Now these are just examples. There are, however, some practices that people engage in and that are completely unhealthy. Some of these I may have already mentioned. You'll have to figure out which during the quiz that follows. Okay. Let's talk about the most important meal of the day. This, of course, is breakfast. In the morning, everyone's in a hurry, and even though people may feel somewhat relaxed after a night's sleep, they think they can manage well without any food in the morning. This is a big mistake. 
because they have to work the whole day and need an adequate amount of energy for this purpose. Furthermore, when they feel hungry, they will often eat unhealthy snacks, and in this way, they will eventually gain weight. This is exactly the opposite of what they may think. Another important factor is the required gap between two meals. Some people tend to take longer breaks in between meals, and as a result, they will gorge on a large quantity of food, which again, is not a very healthy practice. Furthermore, is the fact that some people treat food as a stress buster. For these people, eating is a hobby. This is particularly for those that are considered emotional eaters. When they're stressed out or worried about something, they will indulge in the pleasure of eating without considering the harmful effects of this on their bodies. Another problem is combining food with leisurely activities such as watching television or reading a book. You completely forget about the calories while doing this. Finally, the one thing that is an absolute no is indulging in a high calorie meal or snack just before going to bed. This is a very common habit among teenagers. Now on the other side of the coin, the healthier side that is, you should drastically change your eating habits and patterns. You should keep a close eye on your caloric intake as well as the frequency of your eating. First of all, you should plan your meals. When you know beforehand what you're going to eat throughout the day, you can avoid a lot of the temptations. Controlling the amount of food or any other snack you're going to eat helps in maintaining your health. Control your portions and enjoy only the portions that you decided to take in the first place. Replace unhealthy choices with healthy ones. Find some good and healthy ways to reduce your stress, like reading a book, exercising, or even talking to a friend. Eat slowly and chew slowly. This way you'll spend more time eating and will get a feeling of satisfaction with less food. Keep yourself busy the whole day to avoid the temptation to eat anything that strikes your fancy. As an old saying goes, eat the breakfast of kings, the lunch of kings, but the dinner of a pauper. Now you have 30 seconds to check your answers.